surgeon here. We're going to be talking about some more special reports of how Brexit changes Britain. So we're going to put that on now. And we're going to be, this is like 24 minutes ago, so I'm going to be filming it now. So I'm going to plug this wire in into here. So basically, I've got my PS4 Pro there. And my other PS4 is over there, as you can see over there. This helps me. I'm going to put the phone on the speaker here. So it will record the TV this side. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a clever idea what I'm doing. You may hear a noise with the phone going in to the wire. So I think it's plugged in. I don't know. It should be plugged in. As I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to position it. We start filming this. Take a couple of minutes to just put the phone there. There we go. I don't want the, the uh, phone to fall down. That would just be embarrassing. <laughs> Two seconds. There we go. Let's go and press play for the, this, for the video. You make two think, what was it when you bought then? They give us the board, they did, like, what they don't want it, don't If I don't come out, I'll never go full stop. Remain is a very simple creature. We just want to remain. Britain is tearing itself apart over Brexit. Democracy's dead. I'm not going to vote. Because I voted, it didn't count. This government needs to be honest with the British people. And they're not. And that is a massive problem. Three years on from the referendum, and Britain still hasn't left. What happens when the majority don't get what they voted for? We've got open rebellion. It's literally open rebellion against the people. The very pillars of our democracy, government, parliament, the courts, now going head to head. The decision to advise Her Majesty to prorogue Parliament was unlawful. What's at stake if a Brexit deal can't be struck? Is the possibility that that peace is going to be broken by a return to checkpoints? Britain is, is broken. I'm not sure that everything can be put back together again. Well, ever since the referendum, there have been people protesting outside of Parliament on both sides of the debate, and there are determined, uh, committed lot. And I think it's a good place to start. People ask me who I'm going to vote for, I have no idea. Why should I vote? Why should I respect anybody else's vote in the future when they don't respect mine from the 23rd of June 2016? Democracy's dead. I'm not going to vote. Because I voted and it didn't count. I'm some sort of second-class citizen who really doesn't count. It's so serious. It's more serious than Brexit. Do we have democracy in this country or not? And my understanding is, no, we don't. I understand that a single person might have known what they voted for, but get any two, remain, uh, two lead voters next to each other, they're not necessarily going to agree. You get two Remainers together, they're going to agree. We just want to remain. I wanted to know more about the protesters and what drives them to stand here all day. I have a loud voice, and uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm not afraid to use it. Democracy is all about drawing a line in the sand, and this is about democracy now. And the banner is just a, a, another way of reinforcing it. The simple placard, the simple message, is what what gets over. And I've got an old bit of timber lying around in the in the stables, and the the marker. It needs to be black. It needs to be simple. It needs to be as wide as possible. Pop along to the local art shop, see what they've got. Job done. You enter the debate. There is no greater disloyalty than the elected class ignoring the will of the people. You know, it was a clear majority to leave the EU, and they are doing their damnedest to not leave the EU. That's that's disloyalty. Like all that. I don't normally dress up in a in a crazy costume, but um, what else is there to do? What else is there to do? 
um, we need our voices heard and, and the parliamentarians need to hear that there's passion out there. Jeff isn't alone. We've carried out a national poll asking if people have faith in Parliament after Brexit. 75% said faith in Parliament had been damaged. Lot number 207, we have the Docks watercolour picture by B. Curry. Nice one again. Start your five. Soon in three away. Three's with you. Your bit of three. In advance of three. That sense of disillusionment in Parliament is being felt right across the UK. Places like Port Talbot in Wales voted out, while the Labour MP here voted to remain. Truth is, Many Leave voters here are expected to have left by now. The first person I meet at this auction is Anne Bainan, who voted Leave. If I don't come out, I'll never vote for a stop. Has it damaged your faith in the parliamentary system, in MPs? Definitely. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. So, as I say, I don't know where it's going to end, but it's just a mess. They want us to vote again. Why? We voted. I don't want to vote again. If you can't honour the first one, no. I'm not interested in voting again. And as I said, if we don't come out, I'll never vote again. As I was Labour, but never again. Never again. I get chatting to Steve Jones. He tells me he'll never vote Labour again either. It makes you think, what was the point of vote then? Do you know what I mean? What was the point of it? You know, do, you feel, do you feel like you feel like the MPs have uh, they've ignored your voice? Well, yeah, I've obviously they have night, do you know what I mean? They're laughing like all the kids up in West Winston, you see another night. So you this pathetic, do you know what I mean? We don't understand, we do understand, we are a bit. All right, they hate the MPs, but do you know what I mean? They give us the vote, they did like the vote, they don't want it, don't. It's, it's a view that I hear all over the place. I mean, this guy can hardly contain his, his anger. He voted, he says, to leave. He believes he's been absolutely ignored by MPs. He says they're taking the, the, the mick out of it. And you, you see the anger that gentlemen like that are expressing um, all across this area, all across this part of Wales. We asked people if they thought their MP was doing a good or bad job reflecting their views on Brexit. Most, 41%, said they thought their MP was doing a bad job, with only a quarter thinking they were doing a good job. It's clear that Brexit has driven a wedge between MPs and some of their constituents. With Parliament unlawfully suspended, the Labour MP here, Stephen Kinnock, is back on his patch. Yeah, Welcome right. back home. It's yeah. great to be back. It yeah. always is. Yeah, A always. bit earlier than you thought, though. Well, that's right. Kinnock's caught between his constituents and his own party. Trying to please both, he wants Labour to renegotiate a deal and respect the referendum result. And so I wanted to talk to him about some of the things his constituents have told me. Should they trust you? Well... I think if those who look at the way that the Labour Party has shifted towards a second referendum position will have seen that I have not shifted at all. I am saying exactly the same thing now as I was three years ago after the referendum result. And so I hope my constituents will say, well, he is actually prepared to swim against the tide. He's prepared not to go. You don't have a choice, though, do you? I mean, you've got no choice but to... To face this community and say, look, my party might be pretty much a Remain party now, but listen, guys, I'm not. I'm with you. I mean, it's a fight for survival for MPs like you. I, I am saying to you, hand on heart, that even if my constituency had voted Remain, I would be taking the position that I do because I'm a Democrat and I, I like believe in playing by the rules. I don't think that it's healthy at all for our democracy to pit the people against Parliament in that way because then it's no longer a debate about policies and about what people stand for, it's about who you are and what is your identity. 
Much of the anger I saw here in Wales was over Parliament's handling of Brexit. But elsewhere, if Westminster can't get Brexit right, they run the risk of opening up old wounds. This is the unresolved issue in Brexit. The UK government is under a lot of pressure to come up with an approach to avoid a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland if the UK leaves the EU without a deal. It's so sensitive here because people know what border checks can lead to. The IRA uh, came into our home. They held us hostage. I grew up with Bloody Sunday and marches and demonstrations. My heroes were the IRA. At midnight, they brought Patsy and here and he said goodbye to us and uh, he said don't worry girl I'll be home soon everything will be all right. Our enemies were the, the loyalist community and in my eyes sort of everybody was against us. He was chained to a van loaded with 1200 pounds of explosives. He was used as a human bomb. At the age of 18, I was approached by somebody I knew to become a Republican activist. Um, well, that's fine, not to read this, but... At that time, I didn't have to say this again. <coughs> I, I had to tell yeah. my 18-year-old son I don't know, I just on the phone. Yeah. The chest keeps getting tired and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just a bit of a chest. <laughs> Kathleen and Anne have struck up the most unlikely friendship and I've come to meet them here nice to see you. because I want to understand their concerns. I don't want to go back to heaven day, open my boot and open my bonnet and let them check it out just, just to go on a visit. You know, and then when you look at the way my husband's death was, the checkpoint was at the border. Do you think enough consideration was given to what on earth is going to happen on the border between Republic of Ireland and Ireland? Absolutely not. I don't think any consideration was given really whatsoever. Um, and and even now at this late stage, people still, people in England, Scotland and Wales only know bits and pieces what they've heard in the news. They haven't lived here. They don't know what it's been like. Uh, that it's very, very fragile. Do you have faith in Parliament? <laughs> no. <laughs> and, I, and also, and also, um, in the background that I grew up in, I never had faith in 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 Parliament that was sitting in Westminster. But what is making this a bit more worrying is the possibility that that peace is going to be broken by a return to checkpoint. Anne and Kathleen, two remarkable women who have first-hand knowledge of what can happen in communities when divisions are put in place, when checkpoints are put in place. And they are now looking to Westminster for answers about what the Irish border might look like after Brexit. <coughs> Sorry. Having voted to remain in the EU, we face now being taken out against our will. Stop them, there are some before. signs Stop that all them. the antics down in Westminster could be changing opinion amongst some people here in Scotland. Just look at some recent opinion polls and you'll see that one big issue, one that had arguably gone a bit quiet over the last few years, could be making a comeback now. The last three years have shown beyond any doubt that for Scotland, the Westminster system is broken. And do you know what else has been broken? The promises Westminster made to the people of Scotland, they have been broken too. The Scottish nationalists see Brexit as their second bite at independence, 
a chance to make a run for it. I feel that Brexit has exposed fissures and cracks that were there already, and it's 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 made, but it's shone a light on them um, in a way that I think everybody in, in the whole of the UK now has to recognise that we want different things, we want to go in different directions. I've come to see Karen Campbell, an ex-cop, now author, sick of Westminster and sick of Brexit. For me in Scotland, what's happening at Westminster probably always was a bit chaotic, but it's, it's, it's shown it up for what it is. It's illuminated it really brightly that, I guess rather than people saying, oh, should Scotland be independent? It's, it's now a case of thinking, what is there left for us in Britain? Why, why should we stay? What is Scotland's future? If whatever way we vote will always be disregarded and in something as major as this constitutional change, we just have to suck it up and go along with, with what our, our larger neighbour South have chosen. With people pulling in different directions, the main political parties are now gearing up for a general election. We asked if an election would solve Brexit. The majority, 53%, didn't think a general election was the answer. But an election is coming. It's not if, but when. The result of that election will tell the story of where the United Kingdom is right now and where it is heading. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that, guys, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to try and uh, end the video and hopefully do another one, but the phone's on low battery, like I say. So, it was kind of a interesting video, that one, as we all saw, about the UK, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, about Brexit. So thank you for joining me, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. So that goes. And new people that are watching my videos. Thank you for joining me.